Always wanted to create a plaid pattern, but never knew exactly where to start. Well, if that's the case, then you're in luck since in this video I'm going to walk you through the entire process as we learn how to recreate one of the most iconic patterns made popular by the movie Clueless. So, assuming you already have the software up and running, let's jump straight into it. I'm Andrew and you're watching an Envato Task Plus tutorial. As with every new project, we're going to start by setting up a new document by heading over to File, New, or by using the Ctrl N keyboard shortcut, which will bring up a new window prompt. Here we'll want to set our profile to Web, making sure to define both the width and height of our artboard to 400 pixels, and then simply hit OK once we're done. As soon as we finish setting up our project file, we can start working on the actual tile, or in other words the repeating pattern segment, by creating its background using a 400 by 400 pixel square, which will occur using a light yellow, more exactly FF D6-2C, making sure to position it to the center of the artboard afterwards. Next, we're going to create a smaller 42 by 42 pixel square, which will center align to the artboard and then turn to a guide by simply right clicking and then using the make guides option, making sure to lock it afterwards. While basic, this little guide will come in handy when it comes to the process of positioning our composing shapes. With the guide in place, we can start working on the lighter shapes by creating a 400 by 16 pixels rectangle, which will color is in white, and then position onto the guide's upper edge making sure to lower its opacity level afterwards to about 48%. Create the main shape for the smaller diagonal lines using a 4 by 16 pixels rectangle, which will position to the center of the artboard's left edge. Adjust the shape by selecting its top anchor point using the direct selection tool, and then pushing them to the outside by a distance of 8 pixels using the directional arrow keys. Add the remaining lines by creating an initial copy using the click and drag method, positioning it at a distance of 4 pixels from the original, and then simply duplicate the action using the Ctrl D keyboard shortcut until you reach the other end of the artboard. Once you're done, select and group all the lines together using the Ctrl G keyboard shortcut, making sure to lower the opacity level to 64%. Since we're pretty much done working on the lighter shapes, we can create a copy using the click and drag method, which will align to the bottom edge of our guide. With the copy in place, we can add the inner darker shape using a 400 by 16 pixels rectangle, which will occur in black, making sure to lower its opacity level to 24%. Add the outer darker shapes using two copies of the one that we've just created, which will adjust by increasing their opacity level to 64%. As soon as we finish working on the horizontal section of our design, we can quickly add the vertical one by creating a copy of it, which will then rotate using a 90 degree angle, making sure to select and bring all of the darker shapes to the front so that they will end up overlapping correctly. Since we're pretty much done working on the actual tile, we can now select and group all of these composing shapes together and then mask them using a copy of the background. To do this, first paste the background copy in front, and after selecting both fit and the group shapes, simply right click, and then use the make clipping mask option. All we have to do now in order to turn our design into a pattern is go to Object, Pattern, Make, which will bring up the Pattern Options window prompt. Here we'll want to give our new pattern a custom name, and then once we've made sure that the tile type is set to grid, we'll want to enable the size style to art option, leaving all the other settings as they are. Once we're ready, we can click on done, which as you can see will add a pattern to our swatches panel. To use it, all we have to do is select the rectangle tool, and then once we've assigned a new pattern as our fill, we can click and drag until we get the desired shape and size. That being said, I hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you in the next one.